Hey guys, this is Joe. I'm here with my simple homemade TV lift. Now, this guy's nine years old. He's been lifting a 46 pound or so television for those nine years. Uh, failure free. A little bit of history. I put a YouTube video out, again about nine years ago, on uh, just a picture of the thing or a video of the thing going up and down with the TV. Um, and after 40,000 or 45,000 hits or so, I, I realized there was a bit more of an interest, so I did a second part. Simple Homemade TV Lift Part 2, where I pulled off the cover and showed some of the internal workings and uh, how it worked with a couple of pieces of all thread and, uh, and such, and uh, 50,000 hits on that guy. So here we are nine years later and it has uh, finally failed. I think I know why, uh, but, but since there's been such an interest in the device itself, I thought maybe I would share this with you. Got a little bit of pre-disassembly work and a little bit of pre-diagnostics. Probably wouldn't shoot a video without it. Uh, so here we go, we'll start some disassembly process. First thing to realize is uh, <clears throat> this entire top that came up with the television is uh, kind of a discrete piece. So I've already separated it from the platform that the television sits on. Um, and there's three of the four anyway, uh, wooden posts that kind of just supported the top. So as the platform for the television came up, the uh, shelf itself, or the top, came up as well. Set this aside. And uh, there's our third or fourth pole. Service panel here. You might notice this was originally routed out for a toggle switch, for an up-down manual toggle switch. I've never really used it that way. I've had this thing triggered from some uh, external relays. <laughs> but we can remove this service panel. You'll notice it's kind of finished because it stuck up uh, above the bed itself and was visible. But the service panel underneath that, really kind of, this thing pushed up against the foot of the bed. So this wasn't visible and I saw no need to do such a finished job on it. So we can remove this guy and we'll set it aside. And this exposes a little bit of the wizardry. Now you can see the uh, all thread, simple acne all threaded rod, which appears to be going right into the top of the cabinet. If you think about it, that would be a heck of a construction tip or trick because how would you assemble this thing and have these rods perfectly aligned? Uh, be very tough to do. So that was part of the trick. This entire top is actually a separate piece that sits on top of the top. Uh, and you might notice the safety switch here. This would be the down safety switch. So as the top for the device came down and hit this switch, this would kill power to the motor uh, and stop the thing in case my external relays weren't timed correctly uh, or there was some kind of external failure. This, in theory, would keep it from destroying itself. And for the most part, did a pretty good job. So, that exposes these two horizontal braces, and let's take a better look at these. So we're going to take a better look at this guy, and what it exposes is again this, uh, this horizontal that supports the threaded rod, and you'll notice a uh, bushing here, I believe that would be brass, and coming up through the center of the bushing is the top of the threaded rod, which again goes through the platform that the TV sat on. Uh, and is embedded into the bottom of the cabinet. So this is kind of looking as it should with the rod coming up to the top, but if we look over here on the other side we see a bit of a different story. We see the same brass bushing, but where is our rod? If we kind of look down there a little bit deeper, you might be able to see it. It is gone. It's that's still there, but it is definitely sunk down. So there's the cause of the failure. And it looks to me, uh, we'll lift this tray, and we'll take a better look at it, but it appears from what I found when I moved the cabinet itself uh, from the debris was wood. Uh, and of course the bearing and the washer that that rod sat on. Uh, so it looks as if it wasn't really a mechanical failure, it was just a structural failure, probably due to the weight of the TV over time. So we'll take a closer look at it. Okay guys, we are back with what used to be the simple homemade TV lift. I've uh, done a little uh, additional tear down work and some diagnostics. Uh, as you can see, I've got it torn down pretty much next to nothing. 
And what I'll probably do at this point is let's uh, take the camera off the tripod and we'll uh, give you a little tour as to what I found and the components that really kind of make up this thing. I'll just dissect it a little bit. Here we go. Well, let's first uh, discuss the failure. Uh, the failure was indeed, as I had suspected, the uh, rod had poked a hole right through the bottom of the cabinet. It was a wood failure. It was a kind of a structural more than a mechanical thing. Uh, so you might notice the four bolts coming through around the hole. Uh, there's no more bushing in the hole. I took that out and I'll show you that. If you look at the other side where there's been no failure, uh, you'll see the differential. It's just uh, clean without the bolts coming through just the hole. Uh, you might notice I have the washer seated down in there. Uh, same thing over here. I've got the washer in place that receives the bearing that the rod sits on. The way I did the repair and the reason the bolts are coming through, I took a piece of metal. Uh, in this case one of my favorite little pieces of metal to work with, a used rack filler panel. Um, this looks like it was probably a volume control of something at some point. Anyway, I cut a square of that out. Um, I took a little bit of a router and I routed out the bottom of the cabinet um, in the shape of that square uh, because the cabinet bottom is a good inch or so thick. Well, I guess it's three quarters of an inch plywood. Uh, so I still had a good quarter an inch, eighth to a quarter of an inch of wood left. Uh, so now I've got a steel plate bolted up underneath there and the washers are actually sitting on that steel plate. Uh, so that should take care of the repair. Go ahead and show you a couple of the rest of the components. Uh, this is the motor uh, that drove the thing. You can see that it also is mounted to a rack filler panel. I simply drilled some holes in that guy and you can see the mounts behind it, uh, the wooden blocks with the holes drilled in them. That was used to receive the motor which was mounted upside down from the position that it's in. It's a Dayton gear motor and you can see I've attached a gear to it Sitting over here is the entire tray mechanism. So here is the threaded rods. Um, you can see they were milled at the top. And at the bottom, there's actually a gear attached. It was milled and I had a gear attached to that. Um, and then you'll see another piece of rack filler panel that acts as a plate, which has a nut welded to the bottom of it. And that nut matches the threaded rod. So when the threaded rod turned, it raised this platform, the metal platform, which of course this wooden platform sat on top of. Now, a big key to the success here was this bushing. Without that bushing in place, a brass bushing, and it's the depth of this shelf, without it in place any torque um, at all from this tray, um, as it, the TV would go up and down, of course, it wasn't always universal in torque, so any kind of torque applied, the thing would bind up, but that bushing inhibited that from happening. And that was a big key to the success of the thing working. You might also notice the idler uh, back there, which is just an offset for the belt. It is not grooved. It's just a smooth idler, uh, but acted as an offset and tension adjustment. So I could easily just uh, move these screws and move this whole piece of wood and move that uh, idler back and forth for tension adjustment. So to remove that entire tray assembly, uh, what I did was simply remove the four bolts that held this piece in. You can see the bushing uh, that's in this, so the top of the rod was received by that bushing. That guy would set just like that. And of course the bottom had its own bushing as well. Uh, and since it was weight bearing, what I actually put on the bottom, if I can dig it out of here, this is kind of clumsy, but there it is is a little, I believe that's called a thrust bearing. Uh, so it's a little disc bearing with ball bearings in it, or kind of like a washer with ball bearings. Um, and that guy sat on top of the washer that is now seated in the bottom of the cabinet, in the hole. Hopefully you can see that down in there. One of these brass bushings was used and will be used again. This guy is actually placed right in that hole. Like so. And then this bearing sets on top of the washer. 
another washer and you may notice I've run up to the local Home Depot and got some replacement washers will sit on top of that bearing and the bottom of the rod sits on top of that washer so that provides some mechanical relief and friction reduction um, as those rods turn this is the belt that I'd used or we will use again I see nothing wrong with it it's a, a tooth belt of course it matches up with the gears on the drive motor itself and the gears on the sprockets the bottom of the rods uh, so that's a tremendous help as well if you have you know positive pull positive force as opposed to just relying upon friction and I guess since we have it tore apart this far we should spend a minute talking about electronics uh, you'll notice two relays those are high voltage relays so what would happen is the power supply would come in and the power supply would actually run through the limit switch first uh, hence the term safety limit switch there is again an up and a down limit switch and uh, with the switch opened it would pass current uh, but once the switch closes um, it would inhibit current so it's kind of the inverse of what you would expect from a switch uh, so the current would come in and run through that switch and then it would hit this relay that relay would in turn drive the motor the reason there's two relays one for forward one for reverse so I simply reverse polarity of uh, the voltage going to those relays uh, and whether the up or down was engaged would depend upon which relay was actuated and would go through a different safety switch um, and of course those relays were controlled by a low voltage relay uh, which is a third party control system uh, so 5 volt relay would control the high voltage relay that would send the uh, 10 amps actually to the drive motor uh, that would make it all happen so the plan is to uh, replace uh, as I have the bottom of the cabinet, do that rebuild. I think I have all the parts that I'm going to need. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot and replace, or not replace, I should say, the bushings and the bearings. Uh, one, it'd be kind of tough to find exactly what I need, and, and two, I just really don't see anything wrong with these guys. Uh, the other contributing factor to that is I've decided to replace the TV. The old one that it was lifting again was uh, all of 40 to 45 pounds or so, so New guys going to weigh about 15 pounds. I suspect uh, it's going to be a, a drastically reduced load and have a much easier time lifting it. So um, it held up lifting the 40 pound guy for so long, I'm just not concerned with it lifting a 15 pound guy for another 10 years. Uh, so I'll keep you posted. We'll do another third and closing part of this thing as I do the reassembly. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is redo the entire tray that the TV sits on because that, that tray was done for the footprint of the older TV newer one actually has a slimmer footprint as well so that will increase the tolerance that uh, the shelf had to come up through the top of the cabinet which previously was extremely, extremely minute I mean, the tolerance was literally an eighth of an inch on either side now I suspect I'm going to have an inch or so on either side so uh, that's going to be a benefit as well so we'll put it all back together we'll put a new TV in it and uh, when I have it out here I think I'll go ahead and put a new uh, coat of stain and maybe some new urethane on it polish it up a bit uh, we'll shoot one more part of this, put it together, and put it up on YouTube for you.